All right, so welcome to this uh, presentation of the, the project in this course. So uh, my name is Oscar. And my name is Sofia. And we have been working with predicting the load in uh, wireless networks. So um, yeah, let's get started and uh, I'll tell you what we've been up to. So saving energy is on everybody's mind. Um, there's an ongoing energy crisis in Europe, uh, mostly due to the war in Ukraine. Um, and this is causing uh, this big energy crisis in Europe. And uh, uh, industries all over Europe uh, has, has to cut down on energy consumptions due to very high costs on energy um, and uh, households as well. So everybody is uh, feeling this crisis in their, um, in their wallet, so to speak. Um, and uh, one industry that is also affected is uh, wireless communications and network operators. Um, because when uh, wireless communication uh, occur, of course, energy is consumed uh, from, from the base stations. So energy or network operators uh, wants to cut down energy costs and become more energy efficient. But the question is how uh, can one uh, save energy in wireless networks with minor impacts on the end users? So uh, the idea in this project is uh, to predict the network load and based on this, um, uh, cells can be put into sleep if the expected load uh, is sufficiently low. Um, so we want to predict the uh, load on the time horizon of 15 minutes um, and from, the, from our work, uh, somebody else can take the decision if it's sufficient to um, put radios and antennas to sleep. So in this figure here, we can see, it, uh, yeah, we, we try to depict what uh, we're doing. So we have several uh, base stations um, and several user equipments uh, connected to these base stations. And uh, yeah, in this figure, we show an example that in, in 15 minutes, maybe uh, some user equipment uh, or the load is expected to be lower in this particular area. Uh, and then one can put this base station or cell into sleep mode uh, in order to save uh, energy. So that is the basic idea of this project. So uh, in order to um, do these predictions, uh, we have collected data from a network vendor in Europe. Um, and the data is from an urban environment. Um, it, the data has been collected between September and October this year, 2022. And we have one measurement every 15 minutes. So, um, like um, all, all measurements are summed up for the past 15 minutes for each measurement. And the data set contains uh, 308 different cells in total. Um, and we have um, information uh, or features such as the cell IDs. We have location in form of uh, latitude and longitude. We have the frequency band, uh, the throughput volume in the downlink and number of active users in each cell. And um, the cell ID and the location have been, uh, has been anonymized, anonymized um, to keep the uh, network operator anonymous. Yeah, and um, here in this table, we can see an example of the uh, data set uh, where we have the timestamp here, uh, we have location index, uh, which is 
basically each base station. Then we have the cell ID, cell ID, uh, yeah, and so on. Uh, so uh, this is the um, volume in the downlink, and then we have the active users in the downlink and the upper. So here we have a plot of how the cells are distributed. Um, so each color represents uh, a specific base station. And uh, then we have just added some noise uh, in X and Y position to, yeah, so we can be able to see several cells in one uh, base station. So, um, yeah, as we can see, it's a quite small area that we're looking at um, in an urban environment, um, as earlier mentioned. Yeah, and the data itself, uh, so the, the volume and the number of users is plotted here in this figure. So this blue line uh, represents the volume in the downlink in uh, megabytes. So as we, uh, yeah, and this is plotted for uh, one one day. So as one can imagine, the load is uh, at uh, at its at its peak around noon, and then and in the evening some some time, and then uh, this black curve is the number of users. So this is the time series that we have been working with. And uh, uh, yeah. So in order to uh, perform these predictions, we have uh, been focusing on three different methods. Um, we have implemented a baseline method, um, the autoregressive model, AR model. Um, and the long short term memory and get a recurrent unit um, to compare the base, baseline method AR model to uh, recurrent neural networks. So uh, the the basic idea has to been has been to input uh, several different timestamps from from the time series. So what we have done is um, we have used the input for from the previous time step the and or the three previous time steps and then uh, the uh, the feature from the time series from the uh, previous day um, so we have been using four uh, historical measurements, um, basically. And um, so T minus one is basically 15 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the past 15 minutes, uh, T minus two is uh, 30 minutes ago and so on. Since we have measurements each 15 minutes. Um, yeah. And uh, so this has been done in, uh, for each uh, cell individually for the AR model and for the recurrent neural networks, LSTM, GRU, uh, we have uh, used all cells uh, and their, uh, their features as input. And uh, the, the um, good thing about uh, the recurrent neural networks is that they uh, can take temporal uh, features into uh, consideration, uh, which is why we've used them basically. Yeah, so uh, over to you, Sofia. Yes, so I will start with uh, looking at how we prepare the data. Let's share this notebook. Yes. Uh, so in this notebook, uh, we prepared the data before the uh, neural network models and the linear regression. 
And we first have a method that just reads the data. We have a CSV file uh, and we read it to a Spark data frame. And uh, Oscar has already shown uh, what it looks like, but I will just go through it briefly again. Uh, so we have this uh, timestamp for each, uh, each row. Uh, and then we have five uh, features that are not time dependent. So first the location index. And if it's the same, uh, different cells but the, that are in the same position or the same base station, they have the same location index. So this gives some information about if it's in the same position. And then we have the cell ID and that's a unique identifier in this case. Uh, we have the frequency band and latitude and longitude. And it's not, it's not the true latitude and longitude, but the relative position can still be used for the prediction. Uh, and then we have these three, the last three ones. Uh, these three are the time dependent variables. Uh, and the first one, the uh, uh, downlink volume, that's the one we're trying to predict. Uh, and then we also have the number of active users in the downlink and the uplink. Uh, and it's a sum over the last 15 minutes, all these numbers. Uh, but we need the data in some uh, time series. So we shift the data as well. And then we use this method. And what we do, I'm showing an example for the uh, uh, downlink uh, throughput volume uh, for like just one and two time steps, but we, we do it for more volumes. But if we look at this example, so then we create, uh, then we create extra, uh, extra columns for this like one time step before and two time steps uh, earlier. Uh, and then we will use these new columns for the uh, predictions. Uh, and um, we, can, we can prepare the data like this because we know that we're not gonna look too many time steps. Uh, we're gonna, not gonna use too many time steps. So we can add extra columns for every, uh, for every new feature that we want to use in the prediction. And then we also have uh, some scalers to prepare the data. Uh, this is a mean max scaler that scales the data between zero and one, uh, and that's for the neural network models. And then we have the like inverse scaling as well. And we have a similar scaling uh, or another scaling for the AR model, uh, but there we just remove the uh, trend of the data or the mean in the data. Uh, and then we have a method that splits the data into train uh, and test. Data. And we, uh, we're not doing a random split here. So we instead we base it on uh, like a timestamp. So we use data from uh, September and the beginning of October for the training and then the end of October for uh, the testing. And then we have some methods that just does everything I just, that we just looked at into one method. So we don't have to call them all. Uh, so over to the AR model. So here, this is used as a baseline model. And as Oscar said, this is just predicting one cell at a time. And in this example, we're just looking at cell ID one. So what we have, we're trying to predict this uh, the downlink throughput volume, Y of T. Uh, and we're just using, we're using data from earlier timestamps. So we're using data from 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and uh, 24 hours earlier. And we, only using this data to predict like the next uh, next data point. So first we uh, prepare the data and then we use the built-in linear regression uh, to build up this model. And uh, so here is the, uh, the training of the model. And then we also test the model. And these numbers are maybe not not so relevant here. They will be compared with the neural network models later by Oscar. And then it's easier to say, uh, to compare this result with the later results. But we can look at the results from like a figure instead. So here we have, it's, uh, I think it's a Thursday. Uh, it's for uh, 24 hours. Uh, the blue line is the true throughput and the uh, orange line is our prediction. And what we can say is that we, we're not really predicting zero when it's zero. We are slightly above. Uh, and if you look at one of the more extreme peaks, we are we're just kind of copying it and uh, taking 50% of it approximately. So it, 
it is a prediction. It's giving some sort of uh, makes some sort of sense, but it's not it's not perfect in any ways. Uh, and it's the same trend. This is for a Monday instead, uh, and also for 24 hours. And we can see that it looks it's it gives a similar behavior. So we are a bit above when it comes to zero predicting zero, and the peaks are a bit delayed and lowered. Yes, so over to Oscar again. Now we stop. Yeah, all right. So let's have a look at the recurrent neural networks. So, um, yeah, we have been comparing this baseline AR model uh, with two recurrent neural networks. The long short term memory, which um, from its name has one long term and one short term memory. Uh, and it's suitable for a time series. So this, uh, this long short term memory that we've been implemented here is defined in this cell. Uh, we have been used, uh, we have been using one layer uh, of uh, long short term memory with 50 hidden units and uh, two uh, dense layers after that. Uh, in order to predict uh, the upcoming load on the network. Um, and then we have uh, implemented yeah, a similar or identical model uh, using the GRU uh, uh, unit instead of the LSTM. And um, also we have been using a deep uh, neural network using Gated recurrent units, GRUs, uh, with three layers instead of one, uh, in, as in the earlier models. Yeah, so uh, we will be comparing these three models, basically. Uh, some, so from these definitions, um, we will, um, yeah, we will use this, these models to train uh, from a training data set that uh, Sophia has told you about and then test the data. So uh, we have been implementing this uh, training function using the Horowood runner. Uh, so th in this function, we basically train the data in a distributed manner. Um, so we retrieve the data set um, and we initiate the Horwood runner, and then we train the data in this cell. Um, so first we train for the LSTM model, then the GRU, and then the deep GRU model. So um, yeah, for, from and, and then we save the, these models uh, to a directory, so we can later have a look at them and evaluate them so uh, from this test data set. So let's have a look at the results, I think. Um, yeah, so here is a plot of <laughs> the predictions from one day that I think Sophia showed earlier. So uh, yeah, she showed this AR model uh, with a delayed peak we saw earlier. And as we can see, the uh, recurrent neural networks, they operate in a, <laughs> or a, they, they, their predictions uh, are in the same manner that we have. Uh, yeah, one, once we see a peak in the historical data, we will predict a, a higher value uh, in the future, um, which I guess is very uh, reasonable. Um, but, what we see here is when we get a peak, we uh, simply get a delayed peak. Um, and one other thing that we can uh, notice is that um, where uh, the recurrent neural networks are good at predicting zero uh, when, uh, yeah, during nighttime when there is no load actually. So I think that, um, 
Well, that, that's the most uh, important part, I guess. So we, we want to, to be able to predict uh, when we have a sufficiently low, uh, sufficiently low uh, load on the network um, in megabytes, uh, as we measured it in, in this plot. So when we have a very low uh, load, we can put radios into sleep and in that manner save energy. But during daytime, we might have some problem uh, at predicting min uh, like local minimas, like for example, uh, this, this one here. Um, yeah, so that might be a problem. Yeah, uh, and uh, so to take a look at the overall performance of the uh, the three or the, uh, yeah the, the four methods uh, or the four um, <laughs> implementations that we've been uh, looking at, we can compare it in this uh, bar plot here with the root mean squared error loss in megabytes here um, for each model. And we can see that actually the AR model uh, performs the best in root mean squared error. Um, but they, yeah, they perform quite, quite equal. Um, yeah, so what we can say is that we, we can predict uh, the future ne network load in 15 minutes with, um, yeah, with uh, approximately 90 megabytes loss. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> it it remains to say if this is this is sufficient to uh, say that or or to uh, put radios into sleep. Um, but but as we saw in the in the previous figure, we can at least uh, with the recurrent neural networks we can predict uh, a, a load a low load when during nighttime, which is expected. So uh, that, um, that is a good thing about our work, I think. That's the strong part. Yeah, so I think that's uh, it from us, if you don't have anything to add, Sophia. No, I don't. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.